Welcome back to Boris Physical Media Rant. I'm Vanessa and he's Charles. Don't forget to like our video. It lets us know that you actually like the content that we are putting out. It also helps YouTube algorithm get more of our videos out there for people like you and people like us. Don't forget to comment down below and keep subscribing. We've got a movie review. <laughs> and yes, it is Scream Factory. Mm -hmm. See? We like to confuse you. So this has been out for... A couple weeks. A couple weeks. Uh, we just are now getting around to doing it. And it is Poltergeist 2. The other side. Here's the front. Here is your spine. And your back. It's the same. course you've got your disc artwork okay so this movie takes place a little bit after the first one not much hmm. but like a few years down the road and they are back the demon that had attached themselves to Carol Ann is now back but now it is able to have a human form which is the preacher and he is one creepy preacher mm -hmm. <laughs> very very creepy and he knows that he can attack this family as long as he attacks them one by one he knows he can't get them if they stand together. Mm. And that's pretty much what this movie is about. Is that this beast coming after this family yet again. And again, what do they do? They kick its butt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Craig T. Nelson was back. It mm -hmm. was nice to see him back. Yeah. You had the same wife. I forget what her name is. It's nice to have the same little girl. You had the same little, little boy yes. too, didn't you? Yes. So everyone was the same. Uh can't remember her name the one that comes back the, the short girl oh the short girl I yeah don't remember her name uh but she comes back and she's not in it very long but she sends help which is the indian yeah. which is taylor and he yeah. he was actually pretty awesome yeah he was the only thing is that the the older sister is not in this movie and the reason why she is not is because she was actually murdered right after the first one so they kind of put it as she is gone away to college but they don't really tell you that so if you're wondering why she's not in this that's the reason why yeah, there's a lot of bad things that happen so throughout all of these films yeah no <laughs> that was just one of them <laughs> yeah they, they actually felt like the first one the second one and the third one it just continued that there was like a curse on this film because you had you know she passed away somebody else passed away like somebody got seriously injured like it, it's something always bad mm -hmm. <laughs> happened around these movies which really sucks because they're really good movies yeah now toby hooper didn't uh produce or direct this one no but it was pretty dang good i actually uh, enjoyed this i have not seen this since i was younger mm -hmm. so it was nice to uh revisit it and uh I got a kick out of when uh, Craig T. Nelson became possessed and the way yeah. he acted. That was, yeah. he's actually a really good actor. He is a good actor. I remember him, him being in that show, The Coach. Mm -hmm. Remember that show? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, she done told you what the movie's about, so I'm going to read what the uh, the disc consists of because it's two discs. Mm -hmm. First disc has a new 4K restoration from the original camera negative presented in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Which, unfortunately, the original Polter Dice did not have. No. And Warner Brothers did that. Shame on you, Warner Brothers. I, I mean, wish they had done Domi Atmos on that one. I wish they would have, too. Audio commentary, writer, producer, Michael Gross. Audio commentary with webmaster of the Polter Dice fan site, David Furtney. That is it for disc one. Disc two is your Blu-ray. New restoration from the original camera negative presented in Dolby Atmos. Audio commentary commentary with Michael Gross, audio commentary of David Furtney, Robbie's return interview with actor Oliver Robbins, 
the Spirit World interview with the visual effects teams Richard Edlin, Steve Johnson, and Screaming Mad George. Ghost of Geiger, a look at the contributions of artist H.R. Geiger featuring rare photos and illustrations and interview with friend and agent Les Barani. They're back, the making of Polar Dice 2, Munster Shop, Ghost Makers, the magic of Polar Dice 2 theatrical trailer, TV spots, and still gallery. Mm -hmm. So it definitely uh, comes pretty well stacked. Yes. Now, uh, I don't know about too many uh, new features in this, to be honest with you. Because normally when it comes, it usually says new. But yes. uh, I assume it's everything important over, but I could be wrong. But I love the fact that in the first one, Carol Lamb says they're here. This one, she's like, they're back. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Polter Dice 1, Toby Hooper mm -hmm. directed it. Polter Dice 2, Brian Gibson directed. So, that doesn't matter. Do you know Toby Hooper's in a league of his own? Mm -hmm. This one was done really well, too. I actually rather enjoyed it. It didn't have the Toby Hooper feel that you would feel in, in any of his movies that he does. But right. he's just like a George A. Romero. You know you're watching a movie that Toby Hooper does just like a George Romero. Yes. But this director actually took the direction. I thought he did a pretty good job on it. I thought he did too. But um, as far as transfer, would I say this is better than the one Warner Brothers did? I would say it damn close. Yeah. They really did a good job on it. I kept looking just to see if I can nitpick anywhere. I didn't really find anything. The movie was dark when it mm -hmm. needed to be dark. It was bright when it needed to be bright. Yep. I mean, there, I didn't see any blur. No. Especially during the rain, the rain part when the preacher comes to the house, I figured I would we would see a lot more blur in that, but I didn't see any of it in there. I thought they uh, cleaned it up pretty damn mm -hmm. good. It's about on the same level as what Porter Dice that uh, Warner Brothers did. Yes. So I, uh, I would say a uh, five out of five as mm -hmm. far as the transfer. Special features, I mean, I would probably say a 2.5 out of 5 because there's really nothing new. Right. But they still gave you features, but nothing really new. Right. But at least you got the 4K transfer. I mean, you get interviews that you may not have ever seen, but uh, mm. not necessarily new, but uh, still. And then sound, you do get Dolby Atmos You get in Dolby this. Atmos and sound. So that's, did you need Dolby Atmos in this one? What do you think? You didn't really notice no, too much the... To... Not like the first one. The first one could have definitely used it when Carol Ann came running up the steps. Or running down the steps. And like you could hear her. Like this one they didn't really have that because the beast was more as a human form. You could still hear when it was the chase and the rain and everything. You could yeah. hear it going around your speakers all around. I mean that had a pretty good part. So I guess it... It motivated the speakers a little bit, but nothing mm -hmm. like too in, um, immersive, like, you right. know. But I mean, I'm happy that we have Dolby Atmos. I am happy, too. I wish we would have gotten the first one also, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't know why we didn't. But you can play more of it. It was <laughs> nice to see uh, Scream put Dolby Atmos in because they don't do it with all their movies. You could add, hell, you could even add DTSX. It's the mm -hmm. same damn thing. But uh, it's very nice to actually get Dolby Atmos. There's a lot of movies that that needs it. That you don't get, get it. it. Then you get a lot of movies that don't need it, and they give it to you, like mm -hmm. comedies. You I don't, don't think you need. need uh, Dolby Atmos and comedies. You feel like somebody's walking above your head in a comedy because you ain't gonna get that immersion at all. No. One film comes to mind is Sony, My Best Friend's Wedding. Did we need that in uh, Dolby Atmos? No. It just made the uh, movie a little bit louder. Mm -hmm. But I mean, what are you, what are you gonna hear? You know, I mean, right. there's nothing to hear. So. It's nice movies like this, where it's kind of like paranormal. Yes, because that whatnot. definitely uses the Dolby Atmos yeah. when you need it. I just wish companies would take that into account. Put it in there when it's needed. Just don't put it in there just because you got Dolby Vision. Unless you license them both out and they got to go together, then by all means. But there's a lot of stuff, a lot of times you don't need it, especially when mm -hmm. it comes to comedies. That's mm -hmm. just stupid. Now, anime movies... I think works pretty well. Yes, because there's a lot of movement normally yeah. in animated movies. But uh, there was a lot of fast movement in this movie. Mm -hmm. No blur. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it. So uh, as far as 
overall, the rate this movie, overall, three out of five. A three out of five? Yeah. Because there's no special because features. Because the special features and mm -hmm. a lot of people go with special features because I can't rate it higher because just because of the transfer in the Dolby Atmos. Right. But again, the transfer is a five out of five. It's yeah. just overall, I, agree, I would have to agree with you, it's a three. Because I mean, if we had a little more special features, that would have been awesome. But I also kind of un also understand Carol Ann is gone. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. and she's, she, if you really think about it, she's the main character yes. in these without movies. Her, without her, nothing. exactly. So, but, I mean, it was a great movie. I am very happy that we have this movie. Would I tell you to pick it up right now? Yes, I would. Yes. It, 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 it's really good. I wouldn't wait for a sale, mm -hmm. especially if you still want to get the slip. But mm -hmm. uh, pick it up. It's well worth your time and money to watch this. Yes. Watch them back to back. Watch one and two. I mean, if you've got the third one on Blu-ray, watch that one, too. We, unfortunately, do not have that That's one. That's exactly what we did. We watched the first one because I wanted to revisit the Toby Hooper mm -hmm. version. And then uh, we did a review on that. And I'm like, we need to watch the second one because mm -hmm. we've had it. We got it in for review, and we haven't done it yet. So, But I wanted to kind of wait a little bit longer. Because this is kind of like a, one yeah. of those ones that's, you know, kind of staple around September, October, yeah. at least for us. Yeah. But... I highly recommend pick this up regardless three out of five score do not mm -hmm. let it deter you from not picking it up pick it up for the sound in the picture yes and you got the older interviews I mean mm -hmm. it's, at least that's there but it's nothing new so that's why I gave it the score I did yep. not to say that the movies crap because it is definitely it's not, not. <laughs> Screen Factory did a wonderful job I just wished they could have got more as far as in special features because I know a lot of people like special features. Right, but, but that also could have been the studio that it came from. Yeah. So, which would be Warner Brothers. Mm -hmm. This is our review on Polar Dice Two: The Other Side. Thank you for watching. We will see you on the next one. Bye.